Welcome to Embrace the Spiritual Podcast. Join friends Michelle and Dawn as they share tips on how you too can open your heart, raise your vibration, and reclaim your sovereignty. Hear what they have experienced and overcome in their spiritual journeys while navigating this expansive spiritual multiverse. Discover how they transform their soul lessons from ordinary into extraordinary. Follow, subscribe, and share our podcast so you don't miss an episode. Check out our website, embracethespiritual.com, for additional content and a list of upcoming episodes. And don't forget, follow Embrace the Spiritual on Instagram and Facebook. Welcome back. Today we are talking about free will. And we actually decided we're going to add a little thing called ego into this episode because the more we chatted about what we want to share on this podcast episode, ego is a big part of free will. And I think it's important to understand how the two ultimately connect. By ego, we're of course talking about imagine that little person in your brain that's making all those decisions. You know, we need the left brain to do the math, to you know, drive the car, but sometimes it gets a little bossy and takes over when we don't need it to. So we're definitely going to share some ways to know when your ego is getting in the way and really what free will is and why we care about free will. It's a gift um, Mm -hmm. that we've been given and I love it. At the same time, I can see people wasting it, which drives me crazy (laughs) because they let themselves be manipulated by others and they don't even realize it, you know, because it's like you have free will. That could go so different, you know, especially when people get themselves into situations where they're angry and they're frustrated and it's like you could have backed out. Why didn't you? You have free will. You could say no. I've got taken jobs and I'm like, you know what? This isn't working out for me. I'm done. It was nice meeting you. Good luck. See ya. (laughs) It's very true. And really, the free will we're talking about is at its core, our ability to choose. We choose what we want to do in a day, what we eat, what we don't eat. When we do nothing, that's a choice. And free will is one of those universal laws that across universes is something that typically cannot be infringed upon. But guess what? This is part of why we want to introduce the ego is things can infringe upon your free will and you may not even know it. We'll talk a few examples of what that might look like, but absolutely free will. You know, just this past weekend, my daughter was in a situation. So here she is a couple years into being an adult and presented with a situation of a new job, feared like it was going to be you know, a really great opportunity working in a little bit of a higher end facility. And I'm really proud of her because she was presented with an employment contract that threw up a lot of red flags for her. And the person that had designed the contract, whew, when you look at it, the ego brain was on fire in that situation and my daughter is very she's spiritually connected as well she's the one if you listened to our first episode you would have heard this story and if you didn't go back and check out our episode one when we give an update on on who we are you know our daughter is very connected to the other side and so she's learning how to listen to her higher self and she put her foot down and said, I'm not gonna sign this contract. It went against her values, it didn't feel right. And even though it was a great opportunity, she could have easily felt obligated to sign it for many different reasons. And she trusted her intuition and basically exercised her free will to say, no, I'm not gonna sacrifice my values. Goes to boundaries that we were talking about last episode that she didn't want to violate the boundaries that she was setting up. And had she gone through with it, she ultimately was moving her boundary and making it acceptable to treat her a certain way. You know, that's just one example of free will. Everyone has an example where they've been manipulated into giving up their free will or you know, going against their intuition. So really, it's your right to choose. Absolutely. I think that's beautiful that she said no, that this is not okay with me. Yep. Uh, how many people could have changed their situation by saying, oh my goodness, this is not for the my highest benefit. And she took that step to say, you know, maybe I, I need to think about this or feel what feels right. And I think it's beautiful that she did. You know, as it turned out from that situation, she might be looking at jumping into a completely different career as a result. You know, sadly, there's going to be people like that who work from their ego 
You've probably heard the term narcissist. A lot of people that work out of their ego are narcissists. It just doesn't matter for them. They don't care about your free will. They want what they want and they will do whatever they can to impose on you. So, so you never know what opens up with free will. I think that's the other thing is be curious. What if I actually said no this time? What door would that open? Be curious. Every time that, that you make a major change, that changes your timeline, which we will talk about mm -hmm. in later episodes. You know, I love it when you take the higher timeline because you're changing so much on a, a spiritual level for you and for those around you. And hopefully that person, the narcissist, will take note and say, you know what, I might need to rethink because if one person mm -hmm. said no, is the next person going to say no? Well, it's interesting that specific situation, that person within one minute of her sending in her resignation, tried calling her and emailing her saying, please no, I'll amend the contract to whatever you need it to be. Wow. Yeah. And she still, she still said no because she knew the type of person. I'm so proud of her because I can tell you when I was that age, I probably wouldn't have done the same thing. I would have probably, I don't like the term, but sucked it up and taken the job because I needed the money and I would have sacrificed my own happiness for that. She just said, nope, there's nothing that you could do to change my decision. I love it. Yeah. I'm glad that she did that. I wish yeah. and so many more people, if they would just take a second to say, this is not for me. I've had jobs where I realize I need to get out, but it's just not the time. And waiting for that perfect moment for literally for the constellations to line up with the planets, <laughs> you know, it's just like, all right, I know it's time to reclaim my sovereignty because this is not working out. I can see the dysfunction of the situation. Unfortunately, I've got myself here because of something to help support my family, especially when you're have a family, it is harder to say no to those jobs. My husband mm -hmm. lost his job once and twice he got cut. So luckily he was in a position where he partially got his job back. So we were able to, you know, put things on hold, some things on hold so we didn't have to pay, but mm -hmm. I had to step up and I was working 60 to 90 hour weeks because wow. he's always made more than me, which is fine. You know, I am okay with that. As I told him one day, I really don't think jobs and work is meant for me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I don't think so either. Because <laughs> if I'm not enjoying it, I will be like, you know what? See ya. Yeah. If I don't feel obligated to. And, you know, I've had a lot of jobs and mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed of it. You know, I've learned what I do want to do. And some jobs I've learned a lot, you know, I can cook now, like nobody's business, which is good because my husband, unfortunately, cannot cook. <laughs> you know, when we got married, he says, oh, don't worry, I can cook. He thought he could cook. He's so cute. <laughs> you know, you're right. You never know what timeline you're opening up or opportunities you're opening up. And there's always going to be a situation, not always, cancel that thought and clear that. There may be opportunities or situations where you don't feel you can get out of it. But maybe just make one decision or one change in how you do it. It might open something else up, might have another opportunity. So the free will in that, even though, yes, you need to provide for your family financially, but maybe there's a different part-time job that you could take. On. Again, this is free will. So we're not going to tell you what you can and can't and should, shouldn't do because that's not what it's about. It's about recognizing those situations where you do have free will. You do have the opportunity to take back control and empower yourself to do those things that make you happy. Sometimes we have to do the obligatory financial thing. But if it doesn't make you happy, why are you doing it? Right. And you also have the free will to start pulling in other job opportunities. Because once you, you know, recognize like, hey, this is not what I thought it was going to be. I need to leave. That sets off the universe to start looking for you. So free mm. will still, you know, you may be stuck, but you're not stuck because you've just opened up that doorway of intent. And that intent in turn will lead you to something else. So just changing your mind about something will switch that free will that you've just think, oh, I'm not trapped. I just have to send out the intent to open this doorway. I'm really glad that you brought that up because that law of intention and there's a lot of, I would say, misinformation about how to use that better. If you put out to the universe and really feel it from your heart, if you put out what you want, how it's going to make you feel. So yes, you might need to make X amount per month. 
or not but what do you really what do you want your life to look like and the universe will take care of the how so a lot of times we fixate on how we're going to make it happen and we're kind of getting in the universe's way when we're doing that you might not see an opportunity arise because you're looking at it needing to be a certain way your free will is putting it out there of what you would feel is best for you what does that look like? And sometimes you just need to f focus on the end goal. Who cares how you get there sometimes? We can't know from minute to minute. You know, I'm driving from point A to point B. There may be an accident. You may get stopped by a train. You don't know, but you're going to get where you need to go. And the journey along the way is the fun of it. That's right. Not a straight line. Sometimes the magic is in that windy road that you take. It might take you an extra hour drive, but it could be the most beautiful thing you experience. So definitely a good metaphor for life in empowering yourself to make choices throughout the day and be conscious of those choices. We do so many things subconsciously and because of free will, those are still choices. Whether we're conscious about the choices or not, the universe doesn't care. You're still doing an action. It's still making a choice. Sitting on your couch, binging a show on whatever streaming surface, that's a choice. You're making a choice in that moment to do that activity. That's your free will. The key I would say is don't turn around and judge yourself of what you should have done. That's a slippery slope. Right. I just want to add that little nugget. You need to decompress, you know, or just, you know, recenter yourself and do mindless activities. Not that I, that I do that that often, but I probably should do it more often. <laughs> yeah. I am go, go, go. But sometimes you just need, you know, downtime to say, hey, I just need me time yeah. to do something. And it's the free will of knowing, is this needed at this point? Or do I just need to keep making choices mm -hmm. and continue on the path that I'm going? Yeah. And they don't always have to be huge life choices. They can be little choices when my brain got all jumbled and i felt like i had no choice but to stop working but really i did have a choice i always felt in the moment that like i have to i can't work i can't do this i'm like my brain i can't remember things and even though i maybe felt like i was pushed into a choice i still made the choice i could have easily succumbed to the company saying what can we do to keep you can you go on leave for a little while and i could have done that as well so I did choose not to. In looking back now, that was the best, one of the best decisions I've ever made because it's put me on this journey. The people that I've already worked with to help them self-heal, all of that work wouldn't have been done had I not listened and made that decision in that moment. I might have been on a timeline that I didn't intend to be or that wasn't my organic timeline, but I feel that it put me back onto that timeline. Right, and it's easily to get caught up in, you know, you're going, doing one path, but it's not for your highest good because it's easy to get caught up in the negative and, you know, being manipulated by people who are like, oh, well, you know, this is for the greater good of the company and or the greater mm -hmm. good of me and thinking, oh yeah, I should probably do that. But is it, at the end of the day, we are responsible for our actions, not for other people's actions, but how we react to their reactions is how we deal with giving away our free will. Absolutely. You know, I've done this in the past. I've done a lot of work about learning to look at things a different way, but I remember saying, you made me feel a certain way. Really? I gave that much power to another person to make me feel a certain way. I would disagree. I chose to react to the situation how I did. Yes, they may have done something that was a trigger that I reacted to the trigger. So really they were mirroring to me something I still needed to work on. That helped me empower my own free will because I saw it as an opportunity to learn a lesson. I didn't give away my power. I took it back, said, yep, I chose to react that way, so clearly I need to work on something else, and I did. And that's beautiful. And if people could just stop and realize that they can change, I'm going to go back to my mother, perfect example, <laughs> giving her power away by saying, oh my God, this horrible situation. I'm like, is it really that horrible? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. It's how you're reacting to the situation because your free will is trying to say you should reclaim it, but instead you're focusing on the fear of what could happen and drawing that negative energy in. But if you reclaimed your free will, it wouldn't have happened or you would have dealt with it in a different way. Exactly. That's, you know, we all exercise our free, our free will consciously and subconsciously, as I said. 
but reclaiming it. I really love that word because when we reclaim our free will, look out. I found personally, the universe starts matching your vibration because reclaiming your free will or claiming it for the first time. Maybe there are some of you that you've been in crappy situations where maybe it was something that was a violent situation that you couldn't get out of until you had a safe place to go. You know, there's many different stories and situations. Once you can claim your free will, really what you're doing to putting out to the universe is that I've reclaimed my free will, I'm ready to receive. Because if you're not claiming that for yourself, it's really difficult for the universe to help you with abundance and all these other things that we want to manifest in our life if we're not even being a sovereign being by reclaiming our free will and standing and living in that free will because it's a mixed message to the universe it's hard to manifest something if you're not standing in that power of your free will absolutely true and uh that reminded me i was going to get eyeglasses last year and they had misput my husband's insurance information under our eyeglass coverage in improperly asked for my health insurance card should have never done that it, it was a huge mess so this year when i went and she asked for my you know health care i said no and she's like well i need it i'm like but i'm already in the system under this other plan and i'm like why do you need this and because i stopped to question it because i didn't trust after what happened last mm. year she's like well i guess i really don't and i'm like well then why are you asking she's like well what if there's an emergency i'm thinking if there's an emergency i'm not going to my optometrist yeah i'm going to the emergency room <laughs> because that you know i'm like who goes to an optometrist yeah if you need medical so i said no and i felt better because i'm like i don't like playing these games if of giving away too much information they didn't technically need it mm -hmm. it was under a different plan and if people just stopped and said why do you need to do this and i felt better about it at the mm. end of the day because it did last year it was such a a huge mess and i actually know my optometrist is somebody i went to high school with and oh. i was telling him what happened he's like oh he's like i wish you had you know said something he's like i would have spoke up for you it's like you're the guy behind the curtain over there you know yeah. <laughs> And the guy behind the other curtain, they don't communicate. And he's like, no. yeah, you know, he's like, if anything ha happened, call and ask for me. I'm like, so it's nice to know that people are willing to go the extra mile because yeah. the uh, situation that happened did not have to happen. So right. that's huge. You know, having that questioning, you're not being rude by questioning. It's your information, your right to say, why do you need it? I know that you don't need it. So to really reclaim that was huge for you. And that's just one situation of so many everyday live situations that we're put into that we want to, to deal with and that programming and you know right. follow the system. No. They always make you think you can't say no, but you can. We need to say no more that you can't do that i don't approve of it and mm -hmm. it just takes asking a question why 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 so i try to make you know tell my girls ask why why do they need that don't go for you know well this is what we do because they really didn't have to do no and you know somebody was maybe not willing to look into something and take an extra two minutes to find the answer whatever it could be a lot of times in these situations people are lazy they don't want to go that extra mile because they're like well i'm behind the counter i have the power i yeah. don't have yeah. the power yeah and again it, that's the ego coming in and saying i've been put in this position this is my right i can do whatever i want and that's not true we are still sovereign beings yeah. regardless yeah. and we have free will and we are allowed to do and did i get angry i was a little flustered yeah. she was not budging but i also i'm an empath so was i picking up on her being like oh my god she said no like what do i do now couldn't read her face <laughs> so i'm just like well this sucks so I'm yeah. like, i did not start off on the right foot <laughs> free will is yes it's about us but it's being aware of where other people maybe aren't exercising their free will because they're following a system there's so many regimented systems and you know you could talk at a bigger level the ones that people don't want to talk about politics religion and those things but be curious because when you're curious that's part of exercising your free will i said and that's when things change yeah when you question and when you're curious and that's what we want you as a part of listening to this podcast you know we want to help people raise your vibration 
And what does that mean? It's stepping into that sovereignty, exercising your free will, all these little things that we're talking about. When you start raising your vibration, people will approach you differently. Those walls start to come down when we question things. And just because it's been done the same way for however long, doesn't mean it needs to stay that way. And I know in the workplace in specific, even though I'm not working in a traditional office anymore, I know that we've experienced this. The, the younger generation that is coming in, like our kids, they step into their sovereignty so much. And the era that, you know, we grew up in, we're annoyed by it. Well, why are we annoyed by it? Because we're actually jealous that they have, you know, stepped into their power to say no, to question things. And, you know, we're not going to get into a lot of the stuff that's happening out there because you know we're not we're not going to consent to stepping into timelines that don't need to exist but it really comes down to say no to working at a place that doesn't match my vibration it doesn't feel good to work there so why should i or they're loyal to a person and will follow them if they leave and we get annoyed only because we wish we could do that and we can we can Right. Your mind's just the thing that's trapping you. Empower yourself and realize, I can do that too. Absolutely. We need to stop saying we can't. That's a terrible word yes. because we can. We can do whatever we want. You want to take basket weaving? Go take basket weaving. You want to go to an ashram and study Buddhism? Go do it. Yeah, sky's the limit. You, I mean, we should all be students for the rest of our life. And I wish that somebody had said you should keep learning because that learning mm -hmm. is what helps you grow. It keeps expanding your mind and your energy vibration. We'll keep harping on that. Not going to be the last time you hear us talk about raising your vibration, but it really does. It keeps you engaged. It connects you to different people. Both Don and I hadn't been on this learning path, we wouldn't have even met each other because we took a chance on learning a new modality. And Don lives in Eastern United States and I live in Western Canada. That's why we both have snow. So you might, you'll hear us talking about the snow or the ice or whatever. We met at the beautiful Mount Shasta and that wouldn't have happened if we weren't learning. Right, and stepping into that place of wanting to learn really boosted our learning, I mean, I have like this thirst that can't be quenched because I just want to mm. keep learning more and more and more. Fortunately, I do have to sleep, so <laughs> I'm so sometimes doesn't happen like I would like it to. Yeah. <laughs> There's all that work we do at night too, for sure. One of the other things that we kind of touched on was the ego and that ego mind. And my view of things is that the ego is what is typically interfering in that free will. The ego thinks it's in control, but really the ego is part of an ecosystem of your soul, really. So when you're in this body for this lifetime, yes, we need our ego to do those tangible, tactile things, but we have our free will, which is connected with our higher self. We make decisions from our heart, our gut feelings. It all has to be in balance. So that ego brain, we've talked to the kids about this, that Sometimes you almost have to envision them like a, a separate person so that you can just say, okay, let's have you step to the side and let me just evaluate the situation. Am I really operating from a higher self perspective? And you can think of your ego brain as that part of you that has all of these rules have been instilled and imposed upon you and structure and, and things that aren't there to serve your highest good or really anybody's. If I dare say, they are part of somebody else's agenda and they're trying to infringe on that free will by having your ego mind feeling like it needs to be part of that structure. Because it's so easy to program the ego mind to believe this and believe that. It's the deprogramming the ego mind that you kind of feel like, oh my God, what's going on? Is this, is this really, can this happen? Can this really be how I can live my life to the fullest by making simple decisions, by listening and saying, I don't consent to that. I don't consent to this. And that's my big thing. Like I hear something I don't like. I'm like, I don't consent to that. Luckily, I don't watch TV. I would be arguing with it all the time because yeah. I think TV is the biggest programmer. And you know, the if you're like this, you should follow this behavior. Mm -hmm. If you're like this, you should do this. And I don't believe in that for me now that I've broken away from that ego trap and there are times when you do need to listen to your ego 
Yeah. But it, it's more of a gut feeling, I feel, in my case, where if something feels off, I need to step back, I need to reevaluate and see what's going on. So I'm not saying that the ego is a bad thing. I just think that we it has been so over-programmed that people can't even discern from what they need to do to take care of themselves properly. Mm-hmm. And I think they may know you know, because we're all told we should be living this life. We should be rich. We should be this. We should be that. We should have cars and gold watches. And and I always tell my daughter, they've done something to get there. And are you willing to give up something big to get there? They wear sacrifice like a badge of honor that they've sacrificed so much, but really they've sacrificed in a lot of cases their own free will because they've given up something because of somebody else's rules that you have to do it this way to achieve X, Y, and Z. Most times those structures are benefiting other people. So they're doing it for very selfish and sometimes quite manipulative reasons that, hey, if you follow me doing this, or if you listen to me you know, with this financial advice, whatever it might be, you're giving away your free will. They're not gonna certainly take accountability for your decision to follow them. Well, it was your choice. You followed me and oops, you lost everything. Well, that's on you. Think right. about that too. That you've lost whatever. Yeah. They're like, I'm still sitting pretty. And you know, we've certainly made, made decisions in our past of helping people financially, emotionally, whatever the situation might, might be, you know, they're certainly grateful in the moment. You know, we may not get paid back, whatever the situation might be, but even by that act, might not have felt like, yeah, I don't really think I should be doing this, but I'm going to do the right thing and help somebody out. Well, the right thing by whose standards? Who's this measuring stick? Who's they that say you need to make this decision or you'll be a better person and move on to a certain place energetically when you pass? Um, no, we all end up in the same place. We all just learn different lessons. At the end of the day, me taking control of my free will makes me accountable for my life and my actions and my choices. And I'm good with that. I love it. As you say, it's removed some fear because let's face it, I've learned this the hard way is really frustration around unmet expectations and anger and frustration. So Fear is really, I'm fearful about hurting someone's feelings. I'm worried about, you know, not having enough money for something. So get that languaging out of your system. You are not obligated to anybody but yourself. Absolutely. And that just brought up, if you're in a relationship and it's not healthy and you're letting somebody manipulate you and you're fearful, it still comes down to you've given that person your free will. I've seen people, some close friends give away their free will. I've had family members give away their free will because they're like, oh, I don't want, I don't want to hurt this person. You know what? That person is abusing you and you're consenting and I'm sorry, but you've given your power away by doing that. And I don't know, even if you leave that person, I still think there, you know, you get into relationships where you give your free will away. And this is about breaking that system of giving your free will away because we're not meant to give it away you want to help somebody that is your choice and i help people all the time but it's my free will i'm not going to be taken advantage of and you need to reclaim it if you have given away your free will to the point that you are now fear-based absolutely it can put you in some pretty scary situations certainly and you know we're certainly not saying those situations are easy i've known people in those situations it's not easy to get out ask for help there's resources out there all we can say is exercise that free will by asking for help absolutely Absolutely. and don't keep secrets I know that a lot of my family members are guilty of keeping secrets and it's like well if you had told me things could have been different like that fear of well I I didn't want to worry you I'm like I do Mm -hmm. not worry about you at the end of the day I'm going to bed I'm sleeping well I can handle it you know, yeah. people make judgment calls when they really aren't, they should have exercised their free will and said, hey, I need help, uh, but they don't because it's fear-based because they've given away their free will. That in itself is a cry for help because when you have that insecurity about stepping into your power, reclaiming your boundaries, like we talked about last episode, all that is doing is hurting you. You wouldn't want to hurt someone else the same way. So why are we so programmed 
that it's okay to hurt ourselves by doing these things. It's not. You are worth more. You are a sovereign being that came here to learn lessons. Yes, some of them are going to be crappy lessons. I've been there. Dawn's been there. You start learning those lessons when you're reclaiming that free will and moving yourself back onto that organic timeline. We have a whole other episode that we'll be talking about timelines so that you can really understand that concept. In short, the organic timeline is about what we, what our soul came here and was meant to do in this lifetime. That's really what it boils down to. Some of us are remembering what that organic timeline is or was planned out to be. Lots of people aren't. Lots of people are waking up and we're not saying you have to remember it to be onto your timeline, but listening to your intuition self-care, all of these little things move you back to that organic timeline because you're telling the universe that you are important and you are worthy. And you're ready too. And you're ready. I love it. To hear that. You are ready. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to live a better life, a more joyful life, a more loving life. And guess what? The universe starts showing you those opportunities. It starts showing, putting those things in your path. When you just allow it to happen and look back on, wow, I can't believe that those things just happened. And in such a quick time, because that's what you'll find a lot when you know when you're getting closer to that organic timeline, when things happen quickly. And it's like, if I wrote a book about how that situation just happened, you'd never believe that that actually happened. And it did. So there's some magic waiting out there. And there's signs that you're on the right path. There's always signs that you just need to look. Set that ego aside and start looking by numbers, by sometimes it's feathers, sometimes it's animals. I know when I'm driving and I say, you know, show me this animal and there it is. And I would say, yep. thank you. <laughs> yep. It's so true that when you're getting to that point, I, I love that you brought up signs because so many people look for signs, but remember, the universe might show you the sign in a different way. So be open to all the signs. Because when you become as powerful as Dawn is, she's manifesting that and it's showing herself because she's already put it out in the universe and that eagle showed up just at the right time. Because she's putting those out there. And she's and living that. that. Because on one of my jobs, so where I live, we don't see eagles. At one of my jobs, I was unsure if I should take it. I saw two eagles, which is mm. unheard of. For this because it's very suburban yeah i'm just like i think i was supposed to arrive at 11 11. i'm like all right universe i get it <laughs> i will take the job <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i think that is a big key is watch those signs people see license plates the numbers are big whether you see it on your phone i have a friend that sees 7 11 and it means something to her with regard to a loved family member so there's going to be those signs and They'll keep throwing them at you until you see them. So don't discount those signs that you get. When anytime we say, oh, that's just a coincidence, we are discounting and saying we don't believe you. They're just up there. They, they support us. They're our biggest cheerleaders. They're not going to manipulate us. Right, because they have to honor our free will. Exactly. But you can ask for help. Absolutely. Forget, you know, we have such a hard time because we've given our free will away. Say, universe, I need help. Archangels, I need you. I ask for help every night I, when I sleep for help to heal, mm -hmm. to be on my highest timeline, help those around me. Because it's not always about me. There are, you know, others that I want to help too. Because when yeah. you're in sync with what your purpose is, you want others to grab that joy and that love that you feel mm. in your heart at all times and have it in their heart as well. You know, one sign I received recently, I was down in Arizona and I had just been up in Sedona, one of my favorite places. I'd done a lot of work with for the vortexes up there. I knew it was some extra healing work that I was working through and I was just by myself. I had done that work and I was driving back towards Phoenix and I got the most overwhelming feeling of love. Like it just hit my heart. It made me tear up. I'm driving, you know, trying to wipe away the tears as I'm driving because it was this overwhelming sense of love. And I could have discounted it and said, oh, well, that was weird. I must have been thinking of something. But to me, it was a validation of the love 
from my guides and angels that I was doing the right thing for me. I got that overwhelming sense of love and you're on the right track. Deja vu is another one I like to think of as a sign. A lot of people wouldn't think that. When I get deja vu, I know I'm on the right path because I've been there before. When we either choose to exercise our free will or not, we're essentially creating two separate timelines. And we might get off on a tangent if we didn't make some best decisions in our lives. It would have been part of the lessons our soul needed to learn, so no judgment. But when we start coming back into that organic timeline, I get deja vu. I get goosebumps, truth bumps. Even when down in our talking and we, you know, hit the nail on the head, it's like, ooh, the goosebumps. That's them telling you that you're on the right track. Like, great job. So it could come in a variety of ways that you know you're making those decisions for your best self and to do the best things in your life. Oh, yeah, don't discount those things. They're not coincidence. Absolutely true. I can definitely feel the energy uh, moving because... You guys might not be able to see my face, but I am warm and flush and, and energy. And I know you can't see us because we're uh, not on camera, but the sun came out and it's been raining all day. And I've had a, did you see the rainbow bubble? Yep, I did for a while there. I couldn't even see Dawn's face. All I could see was this big energy and she's had some, uh, some things flying around her too. Some magical creatures with her on that end as well, I could see. So it's just fun to share what we've experienced and all these little nuggets and you know this some of this has been years of learning for each of us and both you know both of us collectively um, experiences we've had with family members that is all feeding into what we've learned how we're living this more organic heart-centered life hasn't been without its trials and tribulations because that's what we have to go through we're still in a human body, we're having human experiences, and it's just a matter of taking a step back, recognizing maybe what doesn't feel right in a situation, and put up those boundaries, shield yourself, exercise your free will. Your ego mind is there. Hey, if there's an emergency and something's happening, it'll get you to safety. That's its job. It shouldn't interfere with you living your organic life either. That's not its role. Absolutely true covered a lot of stuff Ooh. when I didn't even know where it was going to go and it was just like oh yeah that like clicked and clicked and clicked and clicked yeah um, I have some things but I think it's for another time you know like we can do a whole thing on deja vu um yeah that's going to fit in the timeline conversation nicely because I never understood it I've been getting deja vu I remember as a kid I'd walk into a restaurant and I go I have been in this exact moment with these exact people and I'm like, how is that possible? And, you know, we'll maybe leave you this nugget that some of those movies that are out there are telling you the truth about matrix, timelines, multiverse, all these little nuggets that we're going to be sharing with you across our various episodes. You may think of them as entertainment, but we know that it's truth. We're living it. We see it. And we're excited to share some of those nuggets with you because when you start opening yourself up to all of those possibilities, the universe is literally at your fingertips. Absolutely true. And it's amazing when you start refocusing your energy, how your eyes open and you're like, why could I not see this before? Mm -hmm. Or why didn't I question that? And you just start questioning everything and it's beautiful it's a gift that we want to share because you can do it too we're not special we've just decided that we want to share what we have experienced with you our listeners so that you too can step away start questioning start awakening your true higher self and talking with your inner guides because they they're waiting they just need your permission love it because we're going to talk next episode about higher self and it connects perfectly with free will because Dawn said earlier, they can't, the angels and guides, they're up there seeing all, but they can't infringe upon our free will and tell us what to do, quote unquote. So we are excited to share what we've learned about higher self and connecting with our higher self. What does it mean? Who are they? What are the possibilities of what your higher self looks like? How can we tap into that energy to live those more organic lives? Maybe make some better decisions that are in alignment with that and channeling. Don and I sharing our experiences and lessons learned 
we're channeling our higher selves, ultimately sharing this information. We are feeling what the collective needs to hear to help heal people. We're not doing the healing. We're just connecting you with your higher self, with your divine team so that you can self heal. That's really what it's about. Join us next episode. We're going to be talking about higher self, living that heart centered life, ultimately living in the moment. Follow, subscribe, and share our podcast so you don't miss an episode. Check out our website, embracethespiritual.com, for additional content and a list of upcoming episodes. And don't forget, follow Embrace the Spiritual on Instagram and Facebook. With infinite love and gratitude, thank you for joining us.